What is up everyone? This is Faust Killhound and this is Faust Talks. Alright, so I'm gonna give you a scoop about the game I had last week. Warhammer 40,000. Alrighty then. So I played a game last week of Warhammer 40,000 and I went to my LGS, met up with uh, one of the homies over there. Let's call him, let's call this guy, well, he's the Dark Eldar guy. So Dark Eldar, yeah, Dark Eldar James, let's go with that. So Dark Eldar James, I'm over there, I'm chilling with him. Pretty, pretty chill guy, a little bit younger than me, probably about like uh, five years younger than me, but still. Uh, not not a, not a super young buck, but he's still very new in the game. So pretty much every time we play against each other, we we take it easy. We take it easy, we have fun, we joke, we laugh, we, we chill. Yeah, so we joke, we laugh, we chill, we do all that we need to do. So we have that fun. And what... He <coughs> so we played Dark Eldar. Like one thing is he <coughs> he got the Tantalus. It is a transport, but also uh, like one of their like big like battle tanks kind of vehicles. He had. He got that thing. It's a beautiful looking model, and it also has like a uh, like brass uh, freaking like like floor fittings and stuff. It's it's a great looking model. I love that how that thing looks. And that Tantalus, my goodness. Holding like what 24 models, freaking all the like a whole bunch of guns, and then it's so good at melee on top of it too, and it's just like wow, that's actually a great weapon, great vehicle. So I played a game with him, so he didn't bring the Tatalist this time. He brought a whole bunch of uh he brought like three like raiders or something like that, and then like like five venoms. The Venoms, the minus one to hit, can carry up to six guys. It's just like, I'm like, okay. And, and pretty much almost his whole army was transport. Was in a transport. And I'm like, okay, I like that. Except like a few of the, whatever they're called, the, the flying guys. The flying dark Eldar, the ones with the wings. So besides that, his whole army was in, in vehicles. I played my Dark Angels this time. So, what I brought <coughs> was I brought a nine man group of Deathwing Terminators. I brought two Razorbacks with twin LAS cannons on it. Yeah, next time I play, I'm definitely going to be bringing uh, twin multi melters. <laughs> Or not twin multi melters, just a multi melter. So two of those, and then I had three squads of infantry, of just tactical space marines, with Melta on the sergeant and Melta for special weapon. So the two I had was two of them were a six man group with the four basic space marines, a sergeant, and one special weapon guy. The sergeants, they had a chain sword just because it's like, dude, I'm not planning to go melee. I'm just going to be using the multi-melt and staying out of combat as much as I can. And then I had a seven-man group of space marines who were in a drop pod. So on the drop pod, I had my... I had Azrael in there. I had an Inquisitor, and I had a, a an Apothecary in there. The Apothecary was a selfless healer Apothecary, so we could heal a whole bunch of people and res people because that group was going to be like the big fighting group at the time. They're going to take like the most hits and everything. And then with Azrael, they all had four plus ups. They had feel no pains. They had, they had all the other stuff. So I dropped him down, boof. Okay, and then uh, I had my 10-man group of Terminators, which, or my 9-man group of Terminators with Belial 
with an apothecary, Death Wing apothecary, and a Death Wing uh, ancient. So, an ancient in Terminator armor. Add all those guys there. Okay, so first turn. Uh, oh, yeah, and I also had a Redemptor Dreadnought. Just because that shit has so many guns on it, dude. Like, damn, man. That, that, that's awesome. With a plasma cannon. So, I drop down my my two Razorbacks, my Redemptor Dreadnought, and one other thing I brought. I forgot. There was one other thing I had there, too. But I just can't think of it right now. I'm pretty sure I had one more thing. Or it was just a three jo drops. So, but anyways, I had my Redemptor Dreadnought, both my Razorbacks with guys in it, and then on turn one, I moved up my stuff, moved my guys around, and then, uh, and then, well, actually, he moved first, so he moved all his stuff up. He shot a few, like, Dark Lances at my Razorback, but because my Razorback was, like, half obscured, we agreed, is that it's minus one, two shot. And then if I was shooting out of that, I, I would get a minus one also, so it's like, okay, I'm fine with that. So I had that minus one, two shot. He hit once, did like six damage, no, like five damage to it. So it, it was, it was filled in pain, but it was still active. Then my, uh, then was my turn. So the Razorback that got shot stayed still. And with the Dark Angels, uh, uh, chapter tactic, I get a plus one to my shot. So kept that still. I moved up my other, or actually my Razorback, I dropped out my Marines and then moved my Razorback around to the other side where there was a, uh, a, a Raider with a whole bunch of like uh, the Archon and like his little retinue with him. So moved to the side, I shot the last cannons, I blew up the, I, I put everything into it there and I blew up the, the Raider and then uh, like two guys died uh, getting out of emergency disembark <laughs> and then um, and then my marines were already and then the marines that jumped out of that Razorback they they moved up a lot too so they were actually in range where they could just pile like shoot everything that they had onto the onto the Archon's dudes okay and then uh, the other Razorback was that there was a the one that was shot there was one there was a uh, another like raider i shot my last cannons in there i popped that and then my uh and then he just everyone survived out of there and then he brought everyone out then i shot my my redemptor dreadnought everything into that that squad of uh, of corsairs or whatever they're called shot everything i had into them and yeah, I took out almost the whole team. There was only eight left. And he failed uh, morale and the... Uh, and like the... Well, the... The attrition and morale test, he failed both, so they both ran away. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Okay, so, but after all my movement and everything, I dropped my, my uh, drop pod behind. This is before the shooting. Dropped it behind. The enemy lines. So our mission was... It was... Like, like uh, destroy like sacred grounds or something like that because there's a whole bunch of, like sacred relics and buildings and stuff in our uh, deploy in our enemies' deployment zones. So we had to go there and use an action to drop a uh, to set up a, a bomb so we could destroy it. And every bomb gave you like uh, four points, like four victory points or something like that. And they and the enemy had a chance to defuse it. It's pretty much if your if your unit had like a objection secured, they get three plus to the roll, and the roll is like on a four plus you get a uh, you can dis or on a three plus you disarm it. But to set it up, you just set it up. You take the action. So the action literally lasts until the beginning or the end of your next command phase because you have to do it at the end of movement phase so movement phase to set up the bomb it lasts all the way to the end of your next command phase 
and then but to disarm the bomb it pretty much it was like hey you could disarm it like it only took you from the movement phase into the end of the shooting phase so they weren't able to shoot but they still they still could fight and charge <sighs> so when I dropped my drop pod down my all my guys got out then I, I had my uh, inquisitor pop out from behind where the drop pod was so it was behind and then uh, my inquisitor started setting up the bomb but as usual my inquisitor I can never use my inquisitor because they always die right away so uh, like because <coughs> because the Dark Elder I played removed everything up. I set my drop pod behind. Had a whole bunch of Marines protecting the Inquisitor and drop pod. <laughs> drop pod was pretty much uh, open just so that they could not see, like, could not see through. So they were protected behind the drop pod. So they sent a whole bunch of, so we sent a whole bunch of Vipers up there or Vipers or whatever they're called, Venoms, and blew up the drop pod. Did no damage to any of my guys. Then is that uh, because the Vipers were actually so close to the drop pod, is that he, that uh, he did or he did one of the that whatever it's called. Like when he moved the things up, he did one of the stratagems where he could bring his guys out after the after the movement phase. <clears throat> so they were real close to the Inquisitor. They were like some true born or something like that. They they all had swords and, and they were like pretty like crazy powerful with the swords. And then they charged my Inquisitor and charged my tactical squad just because how was set up. He killed the Inquisitor, so I wasn't able to do anything. But instead of him uh like doing some more damage, like fully killing all my like doing some more stuff, I activated. Uh, Azrael. So I had Azrael destroy one of the, or like uh, the destroy like some of the unit. Boof, boof, boof. And then, uh, and then I, I sent, yeah. So he destroyed one of the units with that. And then, and then like next turn was uh, was my shooting. So I didn't really didn't move. And like to tell you, we literally forgot about everyone else because it, it was like, it's pretty much like a turn. We were all fighting there because it was like so much units there. He had like half his units like sent to, uh, to my, uh, like to my space Marines and Azrael, but Azrael and, uh, and the apothecary was keeping everyone alive because that four plus in Vuln, the four plus or the six plus feel no pain and then able to remove wounds and res units is like shit man that was beautiful i loved it so with that was um he kept sending more like trueborn out he had a whole bunch and they just they did so much damage like two plus like minus two or minus two ap which went to only minus one and then uh, the other one goes up to minus four three damage and it's like all of them are two damage so any wounds go through a marine's dead pretty much so he took out all my marines my pop to carry and Azrael, and then and he defeated Azrael. so Azrael escaped because named characters don't die they they flee the battlefield so he left the battlefield and then, after all that, was that unit was pretty much, it was there, it was cleared out. Uh, but he took a lot of damage taking out like my seven space marines and those characters over there. So I had my, then I, and in turn two was that's when I dropped my, uh, my deep strike terminators in. They came in and they just, they just wreck shit. So I wasn't able to drop it close where where my guys were, but I was able to drop it on the other side of the map, still in this area, where I was able to shoot a whole bunch. And I had a, I had my, what's that called? My ancient, my Deathwing ancient set a bomb 
because I wasn't able to set up a bomb from uh, from the apothecary because he brought my pot or my inquisitor into melee, and if uh, and if they die or get into melee combat, their action has failed. So that's what he did. He made my action fail, which I was very annoyed about. But then my but then when I dropped my death wing in, they were able to do that. So the ancient did get the did get the bomb activated, and then uh, with my death wing, I I had um, I had one of the one of the cyclone missiles. So I shot that stuff. Boom, boom, deal some decent damage, and all and I fired all my storm bolters into like uh like his uh what scur like scurriers or something like that. Like scurs, like scores, the, the the flying guys, the dark the dark elder with the flying stuff. So I sent them all into, just shot them all into them. Beep. Tore up that unit. The unit did die, but he had like he had like uh, two units of them. I just shot everything in, into them, and then I shot the rockets and some venoms. I popped one venom, one venom. Took out one unit of, of his scurs, and then for my characters, uh, I had them shoot into uh, into the shit. What's that called? Into like a group of like his uh, corsairs that was on an objective point, just so I could be able to clear that objective. Ugh. And with me doing that. <coughs> Is we had we had it as sticky, the objectives is sticky, so he was able to keep that objective, but still taking off an objective secure unit. <clears throat> and then with Azrael is uh, is a warlord is freaking Raven Wing and Apothecary or Raven Wing and Death Wing are have are considered like troops. So <clears throat> so I was able to actually go up there. Not considered as troops. I, I keep thinking about 7th edition. <laughs> Is that I had two detachments. I had one for the Raven or one for the... The Death Wing and one for the Green Wing. So just because it was a separate detachment, I got the objective secure on the... On the Death Wing. So I was able to actually push them up and then take it on turn three. And then... Uh, <coughs> I ran my ancient in another direction, so my ancient was able to be like nine inches away from that last bomb, and then uh, set it up again. And the ancient was able to set up that next bomb, and that at turn four is, is pretty much where he conceded, because I I gained twelve points for taking out his warlord. I gained. Uh, I kept gaining three points pretty much every, like every turn, I can gain up to three points on my turn or his turn if I'm able to take out more than he is. So I was able to gain the three points. I gained 15 on that. I gained 12 on the other secondary. And then I, and then I had eight points from the, the mission secondary. And then I had... Uh, I forgot how much because I held pretty much like two objectives and then and turn four I was like I held four objectives I held four objectives so I was able to I, I, I yeah I gained a lot of points from that so it's pretty much he conceded because he had like five more like troops on the ground I had uh, one destroyed vehicle one destroyed squad of marines, three characters down, and um, yeah, and that that was kind of it. And I have to say, is like he's still a new player, but he's gotten better. He's gotten a lot better. He's learning how to play the game. He's learning how to move. He's learning how to use his characters properly. And I told him that as I do. I told him, is hey, you're getting better. And this style with all these little ships come going around. That is and that was really a difficult thing to do because it was minus one to shoot any of the vipers or venoms. So that made it difficult to fight them. 
and then and then uh he he had a like 15 or like 15 or 20 like true born guys with the swords that are hitting on two pluses i'm like good grief those guys are not fun and then he had a whole bunch of the uh, and but the issue was i told him was when i was playing against him is that it was not that you did something wrong in this what what happened was you decided to to focus everything on that gr group of marines yes they were in the back yes they were a nuisance yes they were setting up a bomb but the thing was you set too much stuff on them which actually uh, which actually on your rolls which caused you to lose a lot of things for armor saves and stuff like that and you just put too much resources in a group of marines yeah like i, I literally shot them back there to keep to distract you and it did exactly that i even told him before the match like dude i'm shooting this here for a distraction to keep you away so i can uh, push forward and take over the board so I told him that so he knew before we played. But just being a new player and even though that you get a warning, a warning and knowledge like that, it's uh, there is a chance that you won't have the skill or knowledge how to use that. That Well, just pretty much have the skill or ability or understanding of how to utilize that knowledge to your advantage. And that was where he was at, and he did uh, agree to that. I'm like, hey, you didn't, you didn't screw up at that level, dude. You just, you didn't know how to use that properly. Yeah, the Marines are pretty hardy, and especially when I have them in the back with Azrael, with with Azrael and an apothecary and stuff like that. It, it can become very difficult. So I don't blame him for his. Like him not knowing what's really, like how to counter that. Because <clears throat> he didn't bring as many big weapons as I thought he would. Like the biggest thing was he brought a lot of the true born swordsmen guys. And they did a lot of work, but, but on the same thing, they were able to be taken out so easily. And I had so many characters back there, so he had to focus on so many different things. Yeah, he did focus fire on, like, taking out the Inquisitor and taking out, trying to take out Azrael. So it left a lot of other things to attack back there for sure. But because of that... Uh, that that ended up him losing more units but as they say don't split fire because you can screw yourself over if you do that but alrighty then guys so that's pretty much my rambling from last week me playing a game or two weeks ago me playing a game since I haven't done this in a while so I will see you all later thanks for watching like and subscribe and remember Dark Vengeance is always fun. <laughs> Space Marine.